in my uh, previous lecture i have discussed about the discretization process and how to treat how to formulate the equation corresponding to the gradient and uh, it is associated with the convection diffusion equation so in this lecture we extend it and discuss solution of non linear stationary convection diffusion equation by the help of radial basis function uh this is basically in 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 this lecture uh we will i will discuss this radial basis function and the compact discretization uh for generating high resolution scheme for the non linear boundary value problem and boundary layer problems in this equation in this formulation we uh, we shall use a scattered mesh and uh, uh, used in uh, radial basis function and uh, due to this scattered mesh the accuracy the exactness of the solution corresponding to the approximate solution is less than what we have discussed last time so this is in this uh, lecture it is third order accurate and it is basically designed in such a way that the same scheme in a special case will give you the scheme what has been discussed last time classically so uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, one can uh, one can easily tune the mesh concentration to locate the boundary layer and that offer us the main, main accurate solution and finally some uh, numerical simulations are uh, carried out and i will also show that how to calculate such uh, radial basis function with the help of mapal so i will give you the theory uh, uh, the mapal procedure how to derive it and the computer program so um, anyone can with the help of all these things together can implement it easily now uh, this is basically uh, the generalization of finite difference scheme for solving non linear differential equation of second order in this uh, in this radial basis function approach we shall restrict only three point linear combination actually when when we are talking of radial basis function uh, this is basically a univariate function used to interpolate a uh, multivariate function this is a beauty beauty of radial basis function so <clears throat> there are uh, there are several types of radial basis functions and these are defined as basically thin plate spline which is uh, phi r equal to cr whole square log of cr another is gauss function gauss radial basis function that is phi r is equal to exponential of minus c r whole square inverse quadratic as the name says it is 1 by 1 plus c square r square multi quadratic so these are the different category inverse quadratic these are the different category for radial basis function can be used uh, and and each has its own beauty it doesn't mean that uh, one particular radial basis function is more beautiful than an, another radial basis function no each has its own advantage in its own particular situation so a uh, high order com combined compact approximation appro uh, incorporating radial basis function allow us more straightforward implementation of first and second order derivatives and yields better numerical accuracy over conventional compact discretization or conventional discretization formula now uh, when 
whenever a numerical analyst uh, uh, develop a method uh, one has to be very critical about certain things first of all the proper selection of interpolating formula interpolation is in is, is the core of design of algorithm so basically what we are doing something is given to us and we are going to find uh, beyond that so ultimately interpolating formula what kind of interpolating formula we are going to use and what kind of problems we are having this is very important so we have to be very critical about this next basis function in which space we are working very simple we are working in real domain we are working in complex domain we are working in three dimension four dimension whatever i mean to see basis function that is a space and their base are clearly known to us next is mesh network a uh, mesh network sharply affect the formula results accuracy everything is basically uh, sharply changed by the choice of mesh network and the type of domain so uh, these things uh, uh, accuracy and computational efficiency are of course one of a major concern for a numerical analyst and for a approximation technique developer uh, to to think of so uh, i i am just going to read certain certain points uh, uh, compact discretization is an elegant an efficient approach to approximate the differential of a smooth function and it is commonly used to numerically estimate the solution of differential equation compact formulation implements the least number of mesh points necessary to discretize the highest order differential present in the equation i am going to again repeat first order derivative is basically limit h goes to 0 u of x plus h minus ux by h classical formula how many points we have used x and next one is x plus h two points are used in formulating deri first derivative it doesn't mean that with the help of three points you can't find first derivative yes you can very easily but two is the minimum number of point similarly for second order derivative we must require at least three points why what is second derivative basically it is acceleration so it is rate of change of velocity velocity of rate of change so for finding velocity you need at least two points from here to here and again for acceleration you need one more steps so there are at least three points three is the least number we can do same thing we can find second derivative with the help of four five six more than three points also but three is list so we restrict ourselves to the list number of points because it leads to the tri diagonal matrix in one dimension and in two three dimension it gives the block tri diagonal matrix now <clears throat> uh it offers computational efficiency both in memory and space due to the tri diagonal nature what i have told you of the leading matrix evenly spaced meshes compact scheme may not be suitable for analyzing near wall turbulence well uh whether mesh is uniform uh, or, or it is non uniform matrix structure remains same but 
but with the help of this minimum number of uh, uh, points strategy technique the structure is a structure is three diagonals only so with this preserving a structure with this only three diagonals if i use non uniformity in nodes that helps us in treating the problems that appears with the that has application in turbulence theory or boundary layer theory so that is why uh, a scattered mesh plugged with uh, a compact technique uh, provide a way out to problems possessing boundary layer turbulence or high oscillation behavior in a small zone of an integral domain so uh, uh, so these are the situations uh, uh, overall if there is a high fluctuation of a solution um, in, 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 in in a subdomain then we must have to think about the non -uni non uniformity in mess non mess steps non uniformity in mess steps so that that this is what we have written uh, it is advantageous to put more messes in a subdomain with high fluctuation means high oscillation and a small number of messes in the, uh, the in in the place where function has a smooth behavior so what happens uh, uh, by this way, uh, we will basically distribute the discretization error and it overall and overall it minimizes the cumulative error. Uh, this is what in, in, in conclusion, uh, uh, we arrive at a radial basis function and compact discretization on a scattered mess yields more accurate and reliable solution. This is what uh, uh, you we have to be consider, consider, uh, considerable about the proper choice of uh, radi uh, interpolating function for which we are going to choose a radial basis function. And uh, the messes and the accuracy, all these things combined together to use compact uh, uh, discretization, that is minimum number of stencils. So all the joining, it is expected that the radial basis function with combined uh, uh, discretization will give the more accurate and reliable solution. There's still one question about implementing compact discretization combined with multi-quadratic radial basis function is left to be answered. Whether the important characteristics such as order of accuracy, consistency, numerical stability, Jacobian matrix, conditioning, and convergence remains intact as obtained by a standard compact discretization with a natural basis. The question is, whenever we are developing something new, we can think that the new thing the new uh, uh, the new formula does it preserve the formula which we have uh, which we discussed earlier so this is what i am saying in this case the radial basis function we are going to choose and the scheme we are going to develop based on that particular radial basis function in the limiting case gives us the scheme which is derived on a standard polynomial basis that is a standard basis so uh, we can say that this is basically a generalization of the standard scheme. Now, uh, 
non-linear boundary layer equation that is epsilon d2 ux that is second derivative of u with respect to x and it is a function of x u and d1 u that is first derivative of u of course u is specified at two points a and b which is uh, written in equation one and uh, and for uh, to proceed further we must have to assume that this, this function f is continuous in the domain omega and it satisfies the Lipschitz condition and uh, now there is one important issue is here del f del f by del u should be greater than zero this is this is basically uh, piano existence uh, uh, theorem uh, for the first order equation on that line it is basically so uh, Mm. Uh, the the under these conditions we can say that this differential equation has uh, the solution of this equation exists uh, our our aim is to obtain approximate solution technique for equation 1.1 because the analytical solution for equation 1 in the general in the arbitrary choice of f is not known to us so uh, the proposed formulation offers four different possibilities this is the beauty so these possibilities basically we can say these four we we are going to get four different formula based on one single technique that is radial basis function on a scattered mass so the number one number one it is uh, a scattered mass radial basis functions compact finite difference discretization with third order accuracy using non-zero shape parameter non-zero shape parameter of radial basis function and non-unity mess stretching ratio. Next, a scattered mess standard compact finite difference discretization with third order accuracy by setting the shape parameter equal to zero. Shape parameter is equal to zero means it is approaching to zero. And non-unity mess stretching ratio. So basically, there are two things. One of them is mesh stretching ratio, which plays a very important role, and shape parameter of radial basis function that also plays the important role. Their, their combinations has given us these four different categories. Uh, and the third one is uniform mesh radial basis function, and uh, uh, with uh, non-zero shape parameter, and uniform mass uh, radial basis function approach uh, uh, in in which we have taken say parameter to be going to be zero so in in radial basis function implementation if we are going to take say parameter is going to be very small in that case this basically reduced to the standard scheme now before proceeding um, because we are going to implement uh, scattered mess so i would like to explain uh, how how to formulate the scattered mess very easy suppose uh, uh, this uh, si just a moment suppose this uh, si uh, i is going from 0 to n plus 1 is the uniformly spaced points covering the domain 0 1 uh, having the constant steps h equal to si plus 1 minus si and that is equal to i h and this is equal to i by n plus 1 so this is i is going from 0 to n plus 1 these are the uh, equally spaced points now in the domain a b which is of our concern, we are going to define a point like this. Xi equal to A plus 
p minus a into s i raised to the power n where n is a positive real number and this uppercase n is a natural number now what will happen if n equal to 1 if n equal to 1 it provides evenly spaced mesh points over the domain a to b if n is greater than 1 more number of mesh points accumulated towards left side greater than 1 accumulation towards left less than 1 accumulation towards the right accumulation of mesh points towards the right end of the interval a b now our main concern is three point so these three points we shall denote by xi plus 1 xi and xi plus 1 uh, xi minus 1 by mistake i have written here xi plus 1 it is xi plus 1 xi and xi minus 1 and these are basically defined their distance between xi between xi and xi minus 1 the distance is hi and the distance between xi plus 1 minus uh, and xi is basically hi plus 1 so the, uh, the, the, the these non uniformly spaced points having a step size hi and hi plus 1 now these are the two different real numbers hi plus 1 and hi are two different real numbers two real numbers are of course linearly dependent so can i say that hi plus 1 is equal to some real multiple of hi and that real multiple i have denoted by pi and this pi we call mess stretching ratio and its values value changes as the computation moves from one stencils to another this is because this is for ith molecule ith molecule is xi around xi left and right for the left point of xi and right point of xi we have pi but if we move if the computation moves this pi will become will next time it go to pi plus one thereafter it will go to pi plus two and so on so each time this value will change so uh, uh, incorporating this type of changes in value pi is practically difficult computationally it is difficult to choose different values of pi so this type of relation 2.1 defined here is advantageous to generate varying mess stretching value very easy uh, this type of uh, mess points uh, can be uh, generated and we can see the effect of this mess point on a stretching parameter on the mess step size these are the uh, uh, these the, these things can be analyzed and i have analyzed in the following figure mm, just uh, uh, see in this figure on uh, on one axis i have taken the point si and another axis i have taken the point xi xi is our non uniformly spaced points and si is uniformly spaced points so i have plotted for uh, this graph for different values of n n is starting from 0.1 to 0.8 to 1.0 to 1.2 to 1.9 that is what will happen if n increases 
and more particular what will happen when n equal to 1 now please note that when n equal to 1 our line of the our graph line is dotted green line so dotted green line is a straight line a straight line showing a straight line showing that both xi points and uh, and si points are basically lying on the same uh, on the same uh, both are one and the same so both are one and the same means uh, they are basically uh, uniformly spaced not same if if the interval is zero if x is also is from the interval zero to one then only they are same otherwise they have uh, equal uh, step size next what will happen if n equal to 0 0.1 this uh, blue dash so this one this one n equal to 0 0.1 very least number of value of n in this con consideration and largest number of value in this consideration is n equal to 1.9 that is this a star line so this one a star line is this one so when n is less it 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 the graph is going towards uh, upper end and when n is large it is going to be downside like this so there is a change there is a sharp it affects i mean to say the value of n affects the concentration of nodal points and consequently it change it it makes affect the solution values now similarly we can see the impact of n on the mess step size mess step size is hi i have plotted on this axis and on this axis it is si and for different values of n just see how how the graph is sharply changing by change in the value of n well <clears throat> from this graph it is uh, uh, difficult to draw the conclusion but from this graph if we see the impact of n on a stretching ratio it is much more evident so on this uh, axis y axis i have dot, uh, plotted pi and on this axis it is si and by changing value of n you see how 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 the step size varies on n by changing the value of n so i mean to say uh, in a, in a one line that there is a huge effect on the solution values by changing the step size of messes now uh, whenever we are using uh, non uniform messes then we have to be critical about its behavior its property this is what going to define we uh, as a lemma the sequence message step sequence hi is convergent when n is going to infinity now very easy uh, the mess step sequence hi is nothing but it is xi minus xi minus 1 both the points xi and xi minus 1 are coming from a, some finite interval 0 and 1 or a to b so it it uh, evidently we can say it is bounded but the formula what we have used for xi and xi minus 1 is coming out to be like this it is b minus a into si raised to the power n minus si minus 1 raised to the power n we can write it like this it is i raised to the power n minus i minus 1 raised to the power n and this quantity is certainly greater than zero so we can say that hi is positive and but natural this is a step size so it is a positive quantity 
now also uh, hi is basically xi plus 1 minus xi this length is certainly less than the total length of the uh, diffusion space that is b minus a so all of hi is lying between 0 to b minus a so it is uh, 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 bounded uh, for n equal to 1 this step sequence this hi is fixed for all i so it is basically a stationary sequence and <clears throat> for n equal n is greater than 1 we can easily prove that hi plus 1 by hi is greater than 1 and it can be easily proved by this relationship so we can say that the sequence S, uh, uh, hi is increasing and bounded above therefore supremum exists and for n is lying between 0 and 1 we can also say that we can also easily observe that hi plus 1 by hi is coming out to be less than 1 so hi is decreasing and bounded below in this case and infimum exists for the sequence hi so in this case uh, we can say the, the the sequence hi is bounded and monotonic for n is greater than uh, 1 uh, sorry n is greater than 0 so uh, this is what we can conclude that it is convergent the, but this is uh, for n is going to infinity please note that when i am saying n is going to infinity that means h the step size h is going to zero so it is just the different word of saying n is going to infinity is uh, will, will play an important role in computation the mesh stretching rate this is lemma two the mesh stretching rate approaches unity if maximum of hi is approaching to zero although i have written equal to zero but uh, you take it it is approaching to zero for sufficiently large value of n the proof is little uh, uh, a tricky kind of things but uh, but but quite easy so suppose there is a function gamma uh, defined from a set uh, neo to x as an strictly increasing function over interval c2 and it satisfy at gamma at 0 is the initial point of the domain that is a and uh, gamma at 1 is the final point of the domain that is b so what is a and b is already known to us that is the first point of the partition that is x naught and b is xn plus 1. Now I will denote b v as derivative of gamma with respect to v. Now <clears throat> for any given positive integer n let us define v i as i by n plus 1. So this is basically a set of equi-espest mesh points now the non-uniform meshes xi is given by f of vi equal to xi and f vi equal to xi please recall the previous definition so there is a one-to-one -one map between the set of uniform uh, uniformly space points to the set of non uniformly space points <clears throat> and this this map f of v i equal to x i we can say that f of v equal to x so if i find derivative of this gamma with respect to x we can say that d gamma by dv into dv by dx equal to 1 very simple chain rule uh, this technique is basically developed by by soderlind on a while he discussed he discussed in the recent paper some two years back so it is uh, dv by dx this can be written as 
dx equal to bv dv. Well, this vv is basically the derivative of gamma b equal to d gamma by d. So this is just the short symbol. Now, what is dx? dx is xi minus xi minus 1. This is just a, 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 a correspondence of this uh, relation in the discrete manner. So again, bv is written as b v at i minus half, typically at some v at a point, instead of taking at a point i, I have taken a point between i to i minus 1 or you can take between i to i plus 1. So I have typically taken v i minus half and dv is v i minus v i minus 1. Now, <clears throat> What is xi minus xi minus 1? That is hi. This b is same as b tau. Uh, sorry, this is v. Here it is v. By mistake, it is tau. So v uh, i minus half divided by n plus 1. Now, again, because b is nothing but the gamma dash, as gamma is belonging to C2. Therefore, B is a continuous function on a closed interval and therefore gamma is bounded. As a result, we can say that H must approach to 0 as N is going to infinity. So, <clears throat> uh, this is all about I have proved that H is going to 0 as N is going to infinity. Next, moreover, we can observe what is the stretching ratio. The stretching ratio Pi is nothing but Hi plus 1 by Hi. From the formula what we have obtained here in equation 2.3, we can use this one. Use the Taylor series expansion and the nut cell. I am telling you, we can get Pi is equal to, almost equal to 1 plus 1 by N plus 1 into b prime by b plus order of 1 by n plus 1 square. Just take n goes to infinity, what will happen? Pi is going to equal to, uh, is approaching to 1 or not? Yes. I mean to say, uh, either you take n goes to infinity or h goes to 0, the P Pi in the limiting case will approach to 1. So in the nut cell, the non, the scattered mess we are going to consider is approaching to a, a uniformity of mess in the large, for the sufficiently large value of n. Now, <clears throat> I am coming back to the uh, radial basis function very interesting. Given a set of a scattered mass points xi, i is going from 0 to n plus 1, and the values of u at the point xi is known, that is ui, these points are known. The multi quadratic radial basis function is defined as phi kx for different values of k. Now, what is this phi k? Phi k is equal to a square root of 1 plus c square mod of x minus xk norm square. Now, <clears throat> This is the formula which uh, uh, we are going to implement. Now, uh, 
let us denote dm as the mth order differential operator and we aim to approximate dm ux means usually uh, i will be considering m equal to 1 and 2 so uh, we are going to consider we are going to approximate first derivative and second derivative of u using the linear combination sigma j equal to 0 to n plus 1 alpha i j m u at x j now when we open it it simply gives you uh you can take it alpha j x u z kind of things alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 and so on alpha uh, n plus 1 u n plus 1 just for easy understanding so this is basically a linear combination of solution values known solution values what is this alpha i are basically called weight coefficient now <clears throat> just evaluate this relation 3.1 on the function phi kx that is we are going to evaluate this relationship on multi quadratic radial basis function so when we evaluate we are getting equation 3.2 left hand side is derivative of radial basis function and right hand side is their linear combination finite linear combination now in our case uppercase n is going to be very large because we have to make h a step size to be very small now <clears throat> uh, if i take this summation on the right hand side in equation 3.2 starting from 0 to n plus 1 just imagine when it will be written in the matrix form the whole matrix is full of non-zero values so if suppose i am having 10 by 10 matrix where all the entries are non-zero how difficult how difficult is it to calculate inverse of that matrix i am talking in the sense of computational efficiency if i am having thousand by thousand matrix where all the entries are non-zero the computing time is very high to calculate the inverse so keeping this fact in mind we have to be we should think about how to minimize the density, the, 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 the non-zero values of the matrix, which will be formulated later on, should be, should have less number of non-zero entry. Now, very interesting, instead of considering this relation 3.2, please note that <clears throat> in this linear combination instead of considering relation 3.2 for the summation j is going from 0 to n plus 1 we are going to restrict ourselves for j is going from i minus 1 to i plus 1 now uh, Uh, this type of approach of considering uh, the limiting instead of taking summation on the whole number uh, from the j is going from 0 to n plus 1 and I am going to restrict it up to i minus 1 to i plus 1. That is i minus 1 to i plus 1 means points are i minus 1, i, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, i minus 1, i and i plus 1. 